Thank you, Marty. So now we have the recording. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. It's incredibly odd to be in a conference with people all over the world. And I have to say, I am, I'm so old that I can't believe it. This could not have been done even a year ago. Uh, it's really wonderful what you, what's been happening. Um, anyhow, uh, I work with LibreText and for a long time we've had the motto, free the textbook. Uh, we use it occasionally, but I think that's a good theme for this talk. And what I'm going to talk to you about is the rights of learners, how learners need to be able to read OER accessible and how to reach it. They have to be able to get the OER. Uh, if you want to chat during the meeting, LibreText is a gold sponsor. And uh, we have some chat sessions scheduled during the week. Just go to the LibreText sponsor page. So why, okay, so now, going the wrong way. okay. So free the textbook, it's not about cost really. Freeing the textbooks does eliminate debilitating costs, but it's much more than that. It means making sure students get access to the textbooks. It means providing the students textbooks that speak to them. We've talked a lot about this this week and also the week before at OER 2020. And it means freeing curricula from the printed textbook straitjacket. Tech curricula are often locked to the table of contents of the textbook. And it means building tools to create custom materials for the courses and students. So in other words, it's a dissemination problem, it's a construction problem, and it's a learning problem. Oops, okay. So these are the five R's, we all know them. I suggest that there are two more. They're rights of students. The five R's are really rights of creators, of librarians, of repositories, but students need to be able to read the content and they need to be able to reach the content and they need to be able to reach the content globally. Okay. Why do we need open textbooks? Well, the first reason is cost, but not in the sense we're saving the students so much money. Cost drives student failures. As UNESCO says, we need OER that's free, available everywhere to everyone, and we need it to be excellent. Let me raise another point that's a little bit subtle. Students have stopped buying textbooks. We know that. But what they've also done is they found ethically questionable ways of accessing the materials. They basically go out on the net and they find uh, Here's a PDF of this that somebody took. Uh, I mean, student, you hear amazing things that students have actually done things like uh, photo, use their phone to copy every page in a textbook while it's sitting out on the shelf in the library. It's insane. Keep going the wrong way. Okay. So you've all seen this and you may see it 10 or 20 times this meeting. Uh, and the question is, why are textbooks so expensive? And the answer is pretty much the same answer as why are drugs so expensive? Because the person who pays for it is not the person who orders it. A, a physician will order or prescribe a drug for you. A faculty member, the teacher, the instructor, they order the textbook. And that explains a lot of things. But the other half of this is who bought it? And increasingly, that's not the student. And increasingly, it affects their grades. One of the other things that are re related to this that's bothered me for quite some time is students don't retain their textbooks. They sell them back. Or if they're licensed uh, rentals or whatever, they, you know, it's only good for a semester or whatever. Okay, so now you're a chemistry student, you took all your organic class, and now you're taking the MCAT. What do you do? You really are up the creek. And increasingly, I think a lot of the students are using OER. So cost has this terrible consequence. So what causes all this? 
faculty specified textbooks to be used by their class. And publishers therefore have marketed to faculty by providing ancillary services. Now the publishers don't really care about the textbooks anymore. They wanna sell you the homework system. And the homework system, the student has to buy. Then the other, uh, the other arrow in the publisher's quiver is inclusive access. Well, who are they marketing inclusive access to? Not to faculty, you don't have any choice anymore. So the question is, why open textbooks? Okay, another question. A major advantage of OER is the ability for anyone to remix and make the course and make it more relevant to our students. Now, when we talk about accessibility, there's a lot of talk. You'll, you'll hear a lot today, today, tomorrow, about accessibility due to race, sex, gender, what have you. Um, uniform formatting, which we have in uh, Libertex, allows us to automate a lot of the uh, technical things on accessibility using uh, apps. Uh, this is a little demonstration of something else we've added. You can change the size of the text. You can, this is an accessibility feature. You can change the margins, make it easier to read. You can, Go to dark mode. Using the beeline reader, you can actually outline phrases. That helps people who have dyslexia or for English as a second language. So let's go back to our question. How can students get their textbooks? They need to be accessible online, in print, and everywhere. And it's a real problem that came to the fore in the last six months that many students lack internet access. Some of them lack electricity. Certainly as globally, that's an issue. Uh, and without that, they can't get their, their materials. And so you, have, you hear st stories about students sitting out in their cars so they can feed off the internet access of their university in the parking lot. Now let's talk about textbooks. Over here, you have a, a, an Egyptian medical textbook from the time of the pharaohs. If you're an American, you've heard probably about the New England primer for reading old textbooks. Here's my chemistry textbook. There's a cut, today's chemistry textbooks. Why are these so much thicker? Printing technology has changed. How about giving tests? Here's a chalkboard. When I was a student, long time ago, uh, the tests were written on the chalkboard. I'm going to go back for a second. Uh, here's a mimeograph machine. It basically turned out text with blue colors, and the blue colors uh, kind of got off on your white shirt, which you had to wear because you were a student. This is a Gestetner, a little fancier. You can print more. But making tests was not something a, a faculty member could do until the Xerox machine arrived. And that became a whole different ball game. And today we give tests on, in the cloud. So availability is the right to reach the content. We have cloud-based IT through MindTouch. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. Other efforts have these things. I'm using LibreText as something that I know that as an example, all right? I'm not saying that Pressbooks doesn't have this or whoever, um, open, open stacks. Okay, so high uptime, and that means no local IT. I think we underestimate the cost of local IT. It is very expensive, okay. Uh, you can import it into your uh, learning management system. This is again common to uh, platforms uh, via the common cartridge. And you can print everything as a PDF. Now it's better to print things on your desktop printer as a PDF than it is to print. For some reason it's decided it wants to advance itself. Okay. 
Uh, so all of our books are available as files and they're updated weekly from the online, our online download center. Uh, one of the cute things here is we put QR codes into the books for videos. Point your phone at the QR code and you can see the video. Phones are owned by many, 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 many more people than uh, devices. So here's just a quick example of uh, going to get your book. Let it, we'll let it go through a cycle. I think I'm doing pretty well for time. Um, go to all the libraries. The point is you can now get any one of these uh, variations. You can look at the book. You can look at the pre a preview of what your book's going to look like. And finally, you can buy a printed copy. Very inexpensive, about $12. OK. So we're, we're talking about global open ed. Well, these projects, if they're online, they have a global reach. We only get about 40% of our site visits from the United States and about 60% from elsewhere. But it's hard to find a country where somebody's not using LibreTex. But the problem with online OER is there are regions where people don't have electricity. So what we've done is we've built LibreTex in a box on a, based on a Raspberry Pi. And this just came out. This excites me because everything is folded together in the Raspberry Pi. And you can actually put a Wi-Fi hotspot and you can put a solar cell on this and you can have for your class, you can have a local internet with OER. What excites me, I'm crazy, is you can take an SD card and put this stuff on an SD card and you can shove this into an envelope and mail it anywhere in the world. That's a lot easier than ma mailing a book. Okay, this is just disturbing, I'm sorry. I, I'm having my war with, uh, so anyhow, we're building EPUB format distribution and we're building an app with QX for cell phones. These are the people who do uh, Wikipedia in a box. So we're gonna have a cell phone app. Well, a lot of people want to, make their own OER, some don't. And lots of people, every instructor uses lots of different things, but when they do, they'll skip a section of the textbook, they'll teach in different order, we'll, uh, oh, here's some copy sheets, uh, here's some content from other places. And you know what? Students hate all this. They absolutely despise it, it confuses them. So we need to fold all of these resources into a single OER source. Oh, let me, textbook, let me talk a little bit about textbooks. Pick up any textbook in any field. The table of contents are the same. They're rigid. Uh, not only are they rigid in terms of subject matter, uh, anybody here old enough, as old as me, remember the errata sheet that you got in your textbook? Why? Because they weren't going to reprint this every five days, seconds. You know, cycles like, what, two, three years. And even PDFs are very hard to alter. So you ask a faculty member, why don't they adopt a textbook? There's not enough resources, it's too hard to find, but the secret is a lot of them, they don't get paid for creating using OER. They hate that. So institutions have to develop salary and advancement criteria that will motivate and support their, their faculty. So let's talk about the textbook of the future. We need a system. We need to make this system easier to use for faculty, students, et cetera. So our answer is traditionally OER, you have a faculty member, 
and they find something in a library and they point their students to it and the students go get it. But what we need, we need other things. We need homework systems, annotation, executable code, JavaScript servers, learning analytics, bots to curate things, and a link to your LMS from our LMS so everything passes seamlessly back and forth. We need an ecosystem, not a library. We need to make life easy for instructors. Display any language, we do that. It's Unicode, drag and drop remixing, we do that. You can do a book in an hour. Automatic generation of indices and tables of contents. Doing the SCUT work, global and local glossaries, community support, we are a community of faculty and institutional networks. It helps if the deans talk to each other and get behind the project. Let me close with a very quick example of our philosophy. Here's our homework system. Never mind. The point is we have libraries that have been created for different subjects. But our trick is we bring these into a centralized problem library with search capability. And then the assessment delivery depends on how the uh, problem libraries were built. So that goes back there. And then the results go to a centralized gradebook. And there's a centralized learning management system interface. So we can extend this this way, that way to different fields, what have you. Right now, our biggest H5P library is in Spanish. So we have all these running. Having got the first one running that took a long time, the second one took days and the third one took hours. It's a matter of getting our system right. You can embed any of these questions into a textbook and you can use them summatively and you can use WebWork and IMAF AS formatively. The problem with H5P is security. So what I'm trying to say here is to serve our students, to serve our faculty, we need an ecosystem that matches what commercial publishers are providing. And that's the end. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Um, yeah, we have certainly come a long way with books and still the road to ahead is fascinating. Thank you very much for sharing this wonderful work. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions. And 